The t-test is any statistical hypothesis test in which the test statistic follows a student's t-distribution under the null hypothesis. A t-test is most commonly applied when the test statistic would follow a normal distribution if the value of a scaling term in the test statistic were known. When the scaling term is unknown and is replaced by an estimate based on the data, the test statistics under certain conditions follow a student's t-distribution. The t-test can be used, for example, to determine if the means of two sets of data are significantly different from each other. History The t-statistic was introduced in 1908 by William Seeley Gossett, a chemist working for the Guinness Brewery in Dublin, Ireland. Student was his pen name. Gossett had been hired owing to Claude Guinness's policy of recruiting the best graduates from Oxford and Cambridge to apply biochemistry and statistics to Guinness's industrial processes. Gossett devised the t-test as an economical way to monitor the quality of stout. The t-test work was submitted to and accepted in the journal Biometrica and published in 1908. Company policy at Guinness forbade its chemists from publishing their findings, so Gossett published his statistical work under the pseudonym, Student. See Student's t-distribution for a detailed history of this pseudonym, which is not to be confused with the literal term student. Guinness had a policy of allowing technical staff leave for study so-called study leave, which Gossett used during the first two terms of the 1906–1907 academic year in Professor Carl Pearson's Biometric Laboratory at University College London. Gossett's identity was then known to fellow statisticians and to editor-in-chief Carl Pearson. Uses Among the most frequently used t-tests are A one-sample location test of whether the mean of a population has a value specified in a null hypothesis. A two-sample location test of the null hypothesis such that the means of two populations are equal. All such tests are usually called students' t-tests, though strictly speaking that name should only be used if the variances of the two populations are also assumed to be equal. The form of the test used when this assumption is dropped is sometimes called Welch's t-test. These tests are often referred to as unpaired or independent samples. T-tests, as they are typically applied when the statistical units underlying the two samples being compared are non-overlapping. Assumptions Most test statistics have the form T equals Z, S, where Z and S are functions of the data. Z may be sensitive to the alternative hypothesis i.e., its magnitude tends to be larger when the alternative hypothesis is true, whereas S is a scaling parameter that allows the distribution of T to be determined. As an example, in the one-sample T test T equals Z S equals X minus mu sigma caret n display style t equals frac z s equals frac bar x mu wide hat sigma sqrt n where x is the sample mean from a sample x1, x2, xn of size n, s is the standard error of the mean sigma caret Text style wide hat sigma is the estimate of the standard deviation of the population, and mu is the population mean. The assumptions underlying a t test in its simplest form are that x follows a normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma two n. S2 follows a chi 2 distribution with p degrees of freedom under the null hypothesis, where p is a positive constant that depends on n. See below. 
Z and S are independent. In the t-test comparing the means of two independent samples, the following assumptions should be met. Mean of the two populations being compared should follow a normal distribution. This can be tested using a normality test, such as the Shapiro-Wilk or Kolmogorov-Smirnov test, or it can be assessed graphically using a normal quantile plot. If using students' original definition of the t-test, the two populations being compared should have the same variance testable using F-test, Levine's test, Barlett's test, or the Brown-Forsyth test, or assessable graphically using a QQ plot. If the sample sizes in the two groups being compared are equal, students' original t-test is highly robust to the presence of unequal variances. Welch's t-test is insensitive to equality of the variances regardless of whether the sample sizes are similar. The data used to carry out the test should be sampled independently from the two populations being compared. This is in general not testable from the data, but if the data are known to be dependently sampled that is, if they were sampled in clusters, then the classical t-tests discussed here may give misleading results. Most two-sample t-tests are robust to all but large deviations from the assumptions. <laughs> Unpaired and paired two-sample t-tests Two sample t tests for a difference in mean involve independent samples, unpaired samples, or paired samples. Paired t tests are a form of blocking and have greater power than unpaired tests when the paired units are similar with respect to noise factors that are independent of membership in the two groups being compared. In a different context, paired t tests can be used to reduce the effects of confounding factors in an observational study. Topic: Independent, unpaired samples. The independent samples t-test is used when two separate sets of independent and identically distributed samples are obtained, one from each of the two populations being compared. For example, suppose we are evaluating the effect of a medical treatment, and we enroll 100 subjects into our study, then randomly assign 50 subjects to the treatment group and 50 subjects to the control group. In this case, we have two independent samples and would use the unpaired form of the t-test. The randomization is not essential here. If we contacted 100 people by phone and obtained each person's age and gender, and then used a two sample t test to see whether the mean ages differ by gender, this would also be an independent samples t test, even though the data are observational. <laughs> Paired samples Paired samples t-tests typically consist of a sample of matched pairs of similar units, or one group of units that has been tested twice a repeated measures t-test. A typical example of the repeated measures t-test would be where subjects are tested prior to a treatment, say for high blood pressure, and the same subjects are tested again after treatment with a blood pressure lowering medication. By comparing the same patient's numbers before and after treatment, we are effectively using each patient as their own control. That way the correct rejection of the null hypothesis here, of no difference made by the treatment can become much more likely, with statistical power increasing simply because the random interpatient variation has now been eliminated. Note however that an increase of statistical power comes at a price, more tests are required, each subject having to be tested twice. Because half of the sample now depends on the other half, the paired version of student's t-test has only n, 2-1 degree of freedom with n being the total number of observations. Pairs become individual test units, and the sample has to be doubled to achieve the same number of degrees of freedom. Normally, there are n-1 degree of freedom with n being the total number of observations, a paired samples t-test based on a matched pairs sample 
results from an unpaired sample that is subsequently used to form a paired sample, by using additional variables that were measured along with the variable of interest. The matching is carried out by identifying pairs of values consisting of one observation from each of the two samples, where the pair is similar in terms of other measured variables. This approach is sometimes used in observational studies to reduce or eliminate the effects of confounding factors. Paired samples t-tests are often referred to as dependent samples t-tests. Topic: <coughs> Calculations. Explicit expressions that can be used to carry out various t-tests are given below. In each case, the formula for a test statistic that either exactly follows or closely approximates a t-distribution under the null hypothesis is given. Also, the appropriate degrees of freedom are given in each case. Each of these statistics can be used to carry out either a one-tailed or two-tailed test. Once the t-value and degrees of freedom are determined, a p-value can be found using a table of values from students' t-distribution. If the calculated p-value is below the threshold chosen for statistical significance usually the 0.10, the 0.05, or 0.01 level, then the null hypothesis is rejected in favor of the alternative hypothesis. Topic: One sample t-test. In testing the null hypothesis that the population mean is equal to a specified value mu zero, one uses the statistic t equals x minus mu zero s n. Display style t equals frac bar x mu underscore zero frac s sqrt n, where x display style bar x is the sample mean, s is the sample standard deviation of the sample, and n is the sample size. The degrees of freedom used in this test are n minus one. Although the parent population does not need to be normally distributed, the distribution of the population of sample means x is assumed to be normal. By the central limit theorem, if the observations are independent and the second moment exists, then t will be approximately normal n Topic slope of a regression line Suppose one is fitting the model y equals alpha plus beta x plus epsilon display style y equals alpha plus beta x plus var epsilon where x is known, alpha and beta are unknown, and epsilon is a normally distributed random variable with mean 0 and unknown variant sigma 2, and y is the outcome of interest. We want to test the null hypothesis that the slope beta is equal to some specified value beta 0 often taken to be 0, in which case the null hypothesis is that x and y are uncorrelated. Let alpha caret, beta caret equals least squares estimators, se alpha caret, se beta caret equals the standard errors of least squares estimators, display style begin aligned wide hat alpha, wide hat beta and equals text least squares estimators, se underscore wide hat alpha, se underscore wide hat beta and equals text the standard errors of least squares estimators. End aligned then t score equals beta caret minus beta 0 s e beta caret t n minus 2 
display style t underscore text score equals frac left wide hat beta beta underscore zero right s e underscore wide hat beta sim math call t underscore n two has a t distribution with n minus two degrees of freedom if the null hypothesis is true. The standard error of the slope coefficient s e beta caret equals one n minus two i equals one n y i minus y caret i two i equals one N X I minus X two Display style S E underscore wide hat beta equals FRAC SQRT DFRAC one and two Display style sum underscore I equals one carrot N left Y underscore I wide hat Y underscore I right carrot two SQRT Display style sum underscore I equals one carrot N left X underscore I bar X right carrot two can be written in terms of the residuals. Let epsilon caret i equals y i minus y caret i equals y i minus alpha caret plus beta carrot x i equals residuals equals estimated errors SSR equals I equals 1 n epsilon carrot I 2 equals sum of squares of residuals display style begin aligned wide hat var epsilon underscore I and equals y underscore I wide hat y underscore I equals y underscore I left wide hat alpha plus wide hat beta X underscore I right equals text residuals equals text estimated errors Text SSR and equals sum underscore I equals one carrot N wide hat var epsilon underscore I carrot two equals text sum of squares of residuals. End aligned. Then T score is given by T score equals beta carrot minus beta zero n minus 2 ssr i equals 1 n x i minus x 2 Display style t underscore text score equals frac left wide hat beta beta underscore zero right sqrt n two sqrt text ssr left display style sum underscore i equals one caret n left x underscore i bar x right caret two right. Another way to determine the t score is t score equals R N minus two one minus R two Display style T underscore text score equals FRAC R SQRT N two SQRT one R carrot two where R is the Pearson correlation coefficient. The t score intercept can be determined from the t score slope t score intercept equals alpha beta t score slope s x 2 plus x 
2 display style t underscore text score intercept equals frac alpha beta frac t underscore text score slope sqrt s underscore text x caret 2 plus bar x caret 2 where sx2 is the sample variance topic independent two sample t test Topic: Equal sample sizes, equal variance. Given two groups, one, two, this test is only applicable when the two sample sizes, that is, the number n of participants of each group, are equal. It can be assumed that the two distributions have the same variance. Violations of these assumptions are discussed below. The t statistic to test whether the means are different can be calculated as follows: t equals x one minus x two s p two n display style t equals frac bar x underscore 1 bar x underscore 2 s underscore p s q r t frac 2 n where s p equals s x 1 2 plus s x 2 2 2 display style s underscore p equals sqrt frac s underscore x underscore 1 caret 2 plus s underscore x underscore 2 caret 2 2 here sp is the pooled standard deviation for n topic n1 N2 and S2X1 and S2X2 are the unbiased estimators of the variances of the two samples. The denominator of T is the standard error of the difference between two means. For significance testing, the degrees of freedom for this test is 2N2 where N is the number of participants in each group. Equal or unequal sample sizes, equal variance This test is used only when it can be assumed that the two distributions have the same variance, when this assumption is violated, see below. Note that the previous formulae are a special case of the formulae below, one recovers them when both samples are equal in size, n. topic n1 n2 the t statistic to test whether the means are different can be calculated as follows t equals x1 minus x2 s p 1 n 1 plus 1 n 2 display style t equals frac bar x underscore 1 bar x underscore 2 s underscore p c d o t s q r t frac 1 n underscore 1 plus frac 1 n underscore 2 where s p equals n 1 minus 1 s x 1 2 plus n 2 minus 1 s x 2 2 n 1 plus n 
2 minus 2 display style s underscore p equals sqrt frac left and underscore 1 minus 1 right s underscore x underscore 1 carrot 2 plus left and underscore 2 minus 1 right s underscore x underscore 2 carrot 2 and underscore 1 plus n underscore 2 minus 2 is an estimator of the pooled standard deviation of the two samples, it is defined in this way so that its square is an unbiased estimator of the common variance whether or not the population means are the same. In these formulae, Ni-1 is the number of degrees of freedom for each group, and the total sample size minus 2 that is, N1 plus N2 minus 2 is the total number of degrees of freedom, which is used in significance testing. Topic: Equal or unequal sample sizes, unequal variances. This test, also known as Welch's t-test, is used only when the two population variances are not assumed to be equal. The two sample sizes may or may not be equal, and hence must be estimated separately. The t-statistic to test whether the population means are different is calculated as t equals x 1 minus x 2 s delta display style t equals frac bar x underscore 1 bar x underscore 2 s underscore bar delta where s delta equals s 1 2 n 1 plus s 2 2 n 2 Display style s underscore bar delta equals sqrt frac s underscore one carrot two n underscore one plus frac s underscore two carrot two n underscore two. Here c two is the unbiased estimator of the variance of each of the two samples with n equals number of participants in group i one or two. Note that in this case S2 delta is not a pooled variance. For use in significance testing, the distribution of the test statistic is approximated as an ordinary student's t distribution with the degrees of freedom calculated using d f equals S 1 2 n 1 plus s 2 2 n 2 2 s 1 2 n 1 2 n 1 minus 1 plus s 2 2 n 2 2 n 2 minus 1 Display style mathrm d f equals frac left frac s underscore one carrot two n underscore one plus frac s underscore two carrot two n underscore two right carrot two frac left s underscore one carrot two n underscore one right carrot two n underscore one minus one plus frac left s underscore two carrot two n underscore two right carrot two and underscore two minus one. This is known as the Welch Satterthwaite equation. The true distribution of the test statistic actually depends slightly on the two unknown population variances. See Barron's Fisher problem. Topic <laughs> Dependent T test for paired samples. 
This test is used when the samples are dependent, that is, when there is only one sample that has been tested twice repeated measures or when there are two samples that have been matched or paired. This is an example of a paired difference test. T equals x d minus mu 0 s d n display style t equals frac bar x underscore d mu underscore 0 frac s underscore d sqrt n for this equation the differences between all pairs must be calculated the pairs are either one person's pre-test and post-test scores or between pairs of persons matched into meaningful groups for instance drawn from the same family or age group see table the average xd and standard deviation sd of those differences are used in the equation. The constant mu0 is 0 if we want to test whether the average of the difference is significantly different. The degree of freedom used is n minus 1, where n represents the number of pairs. Topic: <laughs> Worked examples. Let A1 denote a set obtained by drawing a random sample of six measurements. A1 equals Display style a underscore one equals thirty point zero two twenty nine point nine nine thirty point one one twenty nine point nine seven thirty point zero one twenty nine point nine nine and let a two denote a second set obtained similarly a two equals twenty nine point eight nine twenty nine point nine three Twenty nine point seven two, twenty nine point nine eight, thirty point zero two, twenty nine point nine eight. Display style a underscore two equals twenty nine point eight nine, twenty nine point nine three, twenty nine point seven two, twenty nine point nine eight, thirty point zero two, twenty nine point nine eight. These could be, for example, the weights of screws that were chosen out of a bucket. We will carry out tests of the null hypothesis that the means of the populations from which the two samples were taken are equal. The difference between the two sample means, each denoted by she, which appears in the numerator for all the two sample testing approaches discussed above, is x 1 minus x 2 equals 0.095 display style bar x underscore 1 bar x underscore 2 equals 0.095 the sample standard deviations for the two samples are approximately 0.05 and 0.11 respectively for such small samples, a test of equality between the two population variances would not be very powerful. Since the sample sizes are equal, the two forms of the two-sample t-test will perform similarly in this example. <laughs> Unequal variances If the approach for unequal variances discussed above is followed, the results are S 1 2 N 1 plus S 2 2 N 2 approximately equals 0 0.04849 
Display style SQRT FRAC S underscore one carrot two and underscore one plus FRAC S underscore two carrot two and underscore two approximately zero point zero four eight four nine and the degrees of freedom D F approximately equals seven point zero three one Display style text D F approximately seven point zero three one. The test statistic is approximately one point nine five nine, which gives a two tailed test p value of zero point zero nine zero seven seven. Topic Equal variances. If the approach for equal variances discussed above is followed, the results are S P approximately equals 0 0.04849 display style S underscore P approximately 0.04849 and the degrees of freedom D F equals 10 display style text d f equals 10 the test statistic is approximately equal to 1.959 which gives a two tailed p value of 0 0.07857 topic <laughs> alternatives to the t test for location problems The t-test provides an exact test for the equality of the means of two normal populations with unknown but equal variances. Welch's t-test is a nearly exact test for the case where the data are normal but the variances may differ. For moderately large samples and a one-tailed test, the t-test is relatively robust to moderate violations of the normality assumption. For exactness, the t-test and z-test require normality of the sample means, and the t-test additionally requires that the sample variance follows a scaled chi-2 distribution, and that the sample mean and sample variance be statistically independent. Normality of the individual data values is not required if these conditions are met. By the central limit theorem, sample means of moderately large samples are often well approximated by a normal distribution even if the data are not normally distributed. For non-normal data, the distribution of the sample variance may deviate substantially from a chi-2 distribution. However, if the sample size is large, Slutsky's theorem implies that the distribution of the sample variance has little effect on the distribution of the test statistic. If the data are substantially non-normal and the sample size is small, the t-test can give misleading results. See location test for Gaussian scale mixture distributions for some theory related to one particular family of non-normal distributions. When the normality assumption does not hold, a non-parametric alternative to the t-test can often have better statistical power. In the presence of an outlier, the t-test is not robust. For example, for two independent samples when the data distributions are asymmetric that is, the distributions are skewed or the distributions have large tails, then the Wilcoxon rank sum test also known as the Mann-Whitney U test can have three to four times higher power than the t-test. The nonparametric counterpart to the paired samples t-test is the Wilcoxon signed rank test for paired samples. For a discussion on choosing between the t-test and nonparametric alternatives, see Sawilowski 2005, One-Way Analysis of Variance ANOVA generalizes the two-sample t-test when the data belong to more than two groups. <laughs> a design which includes both paired observations and independent observations When both paired observations and independent observations are present in the two-sample design, assuming data are missing completely at random MCAR, the paired observations or independent observations may be discarded in order to proceed with the standard tests above. 
alternatively making use of all of the available data, assuming normality and MCAR, the generalized partially overlapping samples t-test could be used. Multivariate testing A generalization of students' t-statistic, called Hotelling's t-squared statistic, allows for the testing of hypotheses on multiple often correlated measures within the same sample. For instance, a researcher might submit a number of subjects to a personality test consisting of multiple personality scales e.g. the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory. Because measures of this type are usually positively correlated, it is not advisable to conduct separate univariate t-tests to test hypotheses, as these would neglect the covariance among measures and inflate the chance of falsely rejecting at least one hypothesis type 1 error. In this case a single multivariate test is preferable for hypothesis testing. Fisher's method for combining multiple tests with alpha reduced for positive correlation among tests is one. Another is Hotelling's T2 statistic follows a T2 distribution. However, in practice the distribution is rarely used, since tabulated values for T2 are hard to find. Usually, T2 is converted instead to an F statistic. For a one-sample multivariate test, the hypothesis is that the mean vector mu is equal to a given vector mu zero. The test statistic is Hotelling's T2 T2, T2 equals n x minus mu zero s minus one x Minus mu zero display style t caret two equals n bar math bf x bold symbol mu underscore zero math bf s caret minus one bar math bf x bold symbol mu underscore zero where n is the sample size, x is the vector of column means, and s is an m times m sample covariance matrix. For a two-sample multivariate test, the hypothesis is that the mean vectors mu1, mu2 of two samples are equal. The test statistic is Hotelling's two-sample t2 t2 equals n 1 n 2 n 1 plus n 2 x 1 minus x 2 s pooled minus 1 x 1 minus x 2 Display style t caret two equals frac n underscore one n underscore two n underscore one plus n underscore two left bar math bf x underscore one bar math bf x underscore two right math bf s underscore text pooled caret minus one left bar math bf x underscore one bar math bf x underscore two right Topic. Software implementations Many spreadsheet programs and statistics packages, such as QTiplot, LibreOffice Calc, Microsoft Excel, SAS, SPSS, Stata, DAP, Gretel, R, Python, PSPP, MATLAB and Minitab, include implementations of students' t-test. See also